So on behalf of the Kerala Museum, on behalf of City Book leaders and Mr. Joseph, um, I extend a very warm welcome to all of you today. And I'm really pleased that Mrs. Maini and uh, Mrs. Varma were able to make the time out of their very busy schedules running RRVH Foundation um, to be here with us today and share some of the stories of uh, preserving this very precious legacy of all of ours. Um, and it is an amazing uh, task and an amazing, uh, you, you know, purpose to have, especially from our last event at the museum. Um, we had Manu on one of our talks just recently, and uh, I was just thinking the hall was so packed. And uh, don't you really wish we could do that right now? But uh, we're making do as humans generally do. And uh, that's our spirit. So keeping this alive, even during COVID times is very important. And it's great to see that RRVH has been doing such great events throughout. Um, and I've been able to catch some of them, some of them I've not been able to catch, but it's, it's been really good. So yeah, so I think uh, over to Mr. Joseph, I think we should start now. It's 6.33 and yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you everybody. Especially thank you, Mrs. Ms. Rukmani Verma. Uh, Ms. Uh, Geeta Anjali Maini. And welcome to everybody who is now tuned in already. Welcome to the seventh episode of All That's Kerala, a chat along the backwaters. It's a twice monthly program that city book leaders and uh, Kerala Museum are presenting. Uh, what we try to do is we try to introduce Kerala to the country and to the world, and of course, uh, to Kerala itself. So let me first thank Mohit. Uh, of City Book Leaders and Atithi of the Kerala Museum Kochi for, uh, for organizing this show and, and, and supporting it in various ways. This episode, the seventh episode, seventh is always lucky. And we're very lucky to have, uh, to make this a very special episode. Uh, actually, for three special reasons. Today's episode is special because for the first time we have two guests in the show. Normally we have only one and this is the first time we're having two guests in the show. Second and special because we have women in the show for the first time. We've always had men so far. And it's a pleasure to see these, uh, to, to, to have women on the show. So that's a second special reason. And the third special reason is that both our guests are women. So let me first welcome our guests tonight. Let me first welcome uh, Ms. Rukmani Verma. Now, how do you introduce royalty? How do you introduce a princess? How do you introduce a princess painter. How do you introduce a person that everybody knows and yet may not know because she, she has a very, she spends a very, she, she doesn't like to be in the limelight, but her name says it all. Let me introduce Her Highness Barani Thirunal Rikmani by Thampuran, fourth princess of Travancore. She comes from a land that was once upon a time, a land of splendid Maharajas. And yes, Maharani's, who are rulers in their own right, and fabulous courts, to an unbroken 1,200, yes, 1,200 year long lineage. And her grandmother, Maharani Setu Lakshmi Bai, was a ruler of Travancore, a state with 5 million people uh, in her own right, not as a region, but as a Maharani. And today, Rukmani Verma is the titular Maharani of Travancore and a brother. In Travancore, we follow the matrilineal uh, line, but the king uh, and a brother is the next in line, titular Maharaja of Travancore. And therefore, he is also, as many of you may be interested in knowing, he, he would have the rights as the custodian of the famous fabulous wealth of the Sri Padmanabhaswami Temple. I know that uh, Mrs. Ms. Varma would disdain all such introductions with the humility that only the Travancore royalty can possess. But let me welcome and introduce her also as the great, great granddaughter of Raja Ravi Verma, about whom we are talking today. This, this episode is on Raja Ravi Verma, a Raja, I mean, painters. And so let me introduce her also as the most, one of India's most renowned painters, and also as the founder, director of the Raja Ravi Verma Heritage Foundation custodian of Raja Ravi Verma's artistic and royal legacy. Rukmani Verma conceived the RRV Heritage Foundation 
of which she is the chairperson today, and her son Jay Verma is the founder trustee. May I welcome you, uh, Ms. Rukmani Verma? I would also like to introduce and welcome Ms. Geetanjali Maini, who is art connoisseur, a promoter, and a curator, a person who has uh, done great, a great deal for painting and art and culture. She runs our gallery G, which is an art resource providing informed access to the best art and consultancy services in the country and across the world. It's a great honor for me. I have, I'm not a painter myself. I'm not an artist. Uh, so it's, gonna, it's a great honor for me to have both of you on our show and this chat. Let me begin by first uh, talking to Geetha uh, uh Maini. Let me ask you, Geetanjali, what is it about Raja Ravi Verma that is so very special that has made you, prompted you to team up with Ms. Rukmani Verma and focus on Raja Ravi Verma? What is it about his painting or his life and what he has contributed that has attracted you to do this? How did this happen? How did you come to meet with Ms. Rukmani Verma and set this RRV Heritage Foundation up? How did the idea come to you? It was uh, quite simple. Uh, you know, one had already started, uh, one had been 17 years in the industry already uh, with art and, uh, and started playing a more active role even in the Kochi Museries Binale. And in all these searches back then, about 2012, 13, one realized that there was a foundation for every artist almost, all our senior artists, M.F. Hussain, Raza, Gaitonde, Tayab Mehta, but one was missing for Raja Ravi Verma and I could never put a finger on why it was. Uh, I met Jay because uh, at that time the foundation didn't exist. And uh, when I met Jay, he, um, uh, you know, he was a recipient of a grant of uh, the private foundation, the Sandeep and Gitanjali Maini Foundation. And uh, when he was going to study, he said, you know, you must meet my mother. And uh, I went to meet uh, Mrs. Verma and that was May 15th, uh, 2015 for the very first time. And uh, the moment uh, I saw her, I said, you know, we spoke and I said, you know, we don't have a foundation for Raja Ravi Verma. And that's what the family should do because you all have everything. You have uh, lineage, you have legacy, you have artistic legacy. And she said, Geeta, yes, this has been on my mind forever. And if you take it up and you're on the managing trustee role, we'll go for it. And uh, for all of us who know us, Mrs. Verma is extremely sweet, affectionate and very persuasive. So there I was on the roll, and uh, four months later, September 15, uh, 2015, we had registered as a foundation with uh, taking the lead role. So that's the background. Uh, let me turn to Mrs. Uh, Rukmani Verma. Uh, Mrs. Verma, let me take, back, take you back to your early years in your grandmother's house, the Travancore Maharani Seto Lakshmi Bai's house. It must have been a fairy tale then. Uh, you must have been... Uh, there must have been an enchanting aura around you. Uh, there must be having a lot of ceremony and pomp around you. You being the royal princess, the first grandchild, the first granddaughter, the eldest grandchild of the Maharani, and obviously the favorite. And there, in your childhood, uh, in that royal environment, must have been where you were first exposed to your great-great-grandfather, Raja Ravi Varma. Let me ask you, what were your earliest memories of that house and of a, fa or of a forefather called Raja Ravi Verma and of his paintings? As a child, what is it that appealed to you uh, about Raja Ravi Verma and those paintings? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's a wonderful question because it goes back to a, a wonderful memories that I have with my grandmother and all of us in the palace. Uh, I, by the way, I'd rather be known as an artist than anything else, because right from childhood, I was able to uh, contact with the, with the beautiful works of art that my grandmother had. And uh, I used to spend hours looking at those beautiful uh, paintings that she had. And I, was, I had this great urge to paint myself. And of course, Raja Devi Varma was a subject uh, we always spoke about, and uh, my grandmother and I had a lot of conversations about him, about his uh, various uh, achievements and how he was in his own studio. My grandmother knew a lot about it because um, actually she was his favorite grandchild. And uh, they had a lot of uh, uh, you know, wonderful moments in her childhood 
when he used to come to visit her with a little present. And she remembers all of that. So there was this, always there was this aura of painting and uh, my grandfather at the back of it all. So uh, this was something that was just, just was built in me from a, the, a very, very young age. And almost even before I started to write, I started to paint with the watercolor uh, boxes that were available. So, but you see the traditional, uh, the background did not allow me to go to an art school as such, which I wanted very much. Uh, so I had to pick up everything on my own and, uh, you know, start painting on my own, uh, whatever I could, uh, uh, you know, by uh, trial and error, so to speak. Of course, I uh, looked at a lot of uh, books on painting and all of that. And so I started to build up a little by little. And uh, then, of course, it just grew into me. It became a great passion. I couldn't live without painting. It came to a stage where it was like breathing, more important than breathing, actually. So uh, then, of course, we went to our education, college, school, all, the, all of it. But in between, always managed to uh, find time to paint. So my memory, my, my, uh, the, my whole, let me say, my whole uh, uh, creative uh, psyche in me is actually uh, based upon my great great grandfather's works. So uh, that is, that is the, the way I've always been looked up to him as a great uh, person who uh, uh, was able to express something in such wonderful ways, which was not done in those days. He was the very first person to uh, uh, paint in realistic uh, style. And his style also had a very specific, uh, 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 you know, it was a specific niche where, which was not occupied by anybody else. He was a very intuitive man very intuitive. And when he painted a portrait, he was able to intuitively go deep into the subject and get his character. So he brought out the characteristics beautifully in his paintings because of this intuitive ability that he had. And uh, that is because that the place where he comes from, his family in Kilimanjaro, is a highly talented family. And they all have this enormous talent They've all, all been grown up uh, with either painting or music. And uh, therefore, it was only natural that Devi Varma also imbued the same ambience from there. And he was able to uh, quick, uh, connect with this form of expression. So this is the, the, the basis of how he was able to bring out the beauty of, of uh, the subjects he painted because of his deep intuition and uh, how he was able to go into a subject and find out the characteristic, translate it through paints onto the canvas. Talking about Devanoka, yes. there was a lot of uh, religion in his paintings. The gods came alive in his paintings. And many of his paintings are even today, revered not as paintings, but as gods themselves. Uh, where did this religious angle come in? Absolutely. You see, that was his great uh, genius that he brought gods down to earth and accessible to people, you see. And so the whole thing became uh, a scene you could connect with because you can identify yourself with people in this mythological scenes that he paints. And he brings it out in a, uh, as if it's a photograph, you're watching a photo of something that actually happened. So that there lies his genius, how he uh, actualized the whole thing. I will call it the art of actualization. And that is the very important uh, contribution he has made because no other artist in the entire world has succeeded in reaching every single home in the nation that the way he did. No other, or think of the masters, the Western masters, for example, their works are in palaces, papal palaces, or in mansions, or in uh, the houses of dukes, uh, lords and ladies. 
It didn't reach the common man until very late. And even now in the Western world, you don't find uh, this sort of a, a, a wide appreciation of something. And that is, the, that is because he actualized the gods whom you pray to. You, he actualized them so that they were accessible. Uh, it was not going to a temple because there you have a vigraha or a murti or a stone uh, representation of, of the god or goddess. Here you have the actual person. So that was done only by him in such a way. This is why he is so great. And not only there is another very important thing which I don't know if people have realized. He uh, is, you know, instrumental in unifying India. At that time when there was British oppression and suppression of everything Indian, he brought an Indianness to the whole, uh, uh, the identity of an Indian, you know, because it's not only just gods and goddesses that he painted, he painted various subjects of various different, uh, uh, you know, caste and creed. You, you spoke about the religious. Uh, yes. the, the, the religious content of his paintings yes. and why it's in everybody's household. I think you briefly mentioned, and I'm going to pick that out. You yes. briefly mentioned that he was one of he was perhaps the greatest painter, and there are a lot of social reasons for it. He was a not an ordinary painter, but he was an ordinary man's painter. He appealed to the ordinary person. So there were also social reasons for us. Paintings being so great. Would you like to comment on that? Am I right or am I off the mark? You're very right. The thing is, he never distinguished between caste or creed or anything. He painted all, all castes, all creeds and, you know, united them. You know, and I would say that played a big part in the Swaraj movement because he gave, he made Indians feel Indian, that they were one. You know, under his brush, all Indians became together. So, and the characters he painted, were so uh, lifelike, you know, again, his art of actualization was such that they could identify themselves with the subjects. And because of that, they were able to uh, uh, they feel proud. They were Indians. You know, he brought that Indianness uh, into, uh, into the subjects he painted. So, Can, you, can I continue to speak? Can you hear me? Yeah, please go ahead. Yes. Please go ahead. So that was a very important uh, uh, contribution that he made to make India one under his brush, an Indianness, so to speak. Uh, you know, everybody felt proud to be an Indian. And they could recognize themselves in the paintings that he did. So this was a very important achievement. And this is something only he has been able to achieve as an artist. This is how he contributed to the society, how everybody became proud of being Indian, the way he painted everybody as, as wonderful Indian subjects, not only the gods and goddesses, but this is another achievement that he was able to, uh, uh, you know, uh, do that was that was another thing which was he was very it was a commendable thank you so much you you are a painter yourself you're a great painter you're one of the greatest indian contemporary painters and your great grandfather raja ravi varma would have influenced uh, you can i ask you how his oeuvre has impacted on your painting i greatly admired his style but i wanted uh, my own style as well so based upon his concept and his style of working. I somehow, uh, I sort of developed a, a, a genre of my own, say thank you to my great great grandfather. But I also live up to the fact that he perhaps wanted me to do something of my own as well. So this was something I always wanted to do. Yeah, you, you said somewhere, I am picking on that, you said somewhere that Raja Ravi Varma would communicate with you as you painted, that you were connected with him that you often felt that he was by your side as you painted. Is it yes. really true? That's very, it's very strange. And actually it's very odd to speak about it because it's something that perhaps uh, normally you won't uh, be able to, uh, you know, uh, comprehend. But there have been moments when I've been painting and I've reached a, a particular spot where I said, oh, now what? What do I do now? 
And some, from somewhere came this message, do this or that color or this color, and it worked. So I felt that that was a communication I was receiving from my great grandfather. <laughs> and I recently I mean, uh, saw an exhibition that was curated by the foundation on Google's art and cultural platform on Raja Ravi Varma. It's a splendid way for, for an immersive experience and for the public to learn the final details of the art. In fact, I learned a lot. I'm not, I'm not into painting, but I think if I can understand art a teeny weeny bit today, as I speak to both, to, to both of you, it's because uh, I, I went through that Google's art and culture platform. And last December, 2019, uh, you were at the museum, at the Kerala Museum, and you show, showcase along with Mrs. Verma, a lot of uh, Ravi Verma's original oil works. What aspects of uh, the, what was the response to it and, and how did you come to think of such a exhibition uh, in Kerala, in Cochin, in, in, in Kerala Museum? So uh, a great question is to answer the first part about Google Arts and Culture, since Bose is here, uh, he knows. Uh, I mean, I, I saw what Google Arts and Culture did for KMB. It helped map the region. It helped, uh, it's, it's in Fort Kochi and uh, nobody who attended Kerala or doesn't even go to Fort Kochi wouldn't see it. Uh, so here was Google Arts and Culture taking KMB all over uh, the world. And, and I saw how it impacted the footfalls and it was such a positive thing. So when we started the foundation, I reached out to GAC and uh, I told them we have uh, very few uh, exhibits just now, but we've ha like we had a handshake and we said that over the years, what we will do is we'll create a lot of exhibits. We'll collect a lot of items and periodically release these exhibits into the e-space so people can get to know more. And since the first time we tied up with them to today, we have 20 exhibits live there. Uh, we have over 506 items uh, uh, sort of featured in the various exhibitions. And uh, one thing that we're really proud about is uh, this year we suggested to GAC that why don't you uh, not just talk about the foundation, but why don't you bring all bodies, whether they are hobby groups, there are other institutions, foundations, doing things on Ravi Varma, good work on Ravi Varma, bring it all to one platform as we have done for Van Gogh, or uh, Picasso, and let's just make this the largest platform there is for Ravi Varma. And uh, that was what happened with Google Arts and Culture for us, and that's what we've been able to do. Uh, the Kochi Museum exhibit um, was because we wanted to acknowledge the contemporaries of Ravi Varma, uh, be it Shekhar Varya, Raja Raja Varma, Mukundan Tampi. And uh, we had such a wonderful response from collectors and owners in Kerala that when we said that this is what we want to do and we want to bring it to Kochi for the first time. In fact, I must tell you this, Mr. Joseph, I'm very, very Fuji. It's like home to me. I grew up there in uh, 75 and 76 uh, in Koroti. So I was very close by. So Kochi was our place. I have a great attachment to the place. Kochi is exceptionally welcoming to us and uh, to me particularly. So there was no question of not taking what is our best exhibition there. And uh, Aditi sort of laid out the red carpet for us. And, uh, you know, we put out these paintings. School children were coming by the droves. We didn't have enough space to seat them. Uh, Rupika Chavla and our uh, other guest here today, Manu Pile, he was a speaker and Manu just, just fell binds everybody. So it was nice to have him speak and uh, sort of give that contemporary artist list a lot of uh, acknowledgement that perhaps, you know, they maybe in some level been overshadowed by Ravi Varma. It doesn't take away the fact that they're great artists. So it was our first attempt to acknowledging everyone from the region.